Hi and welcome to the channel. So since I started this journey going into mechanical keyboards for kind of maximizing productivity when I'm working with the Mac, one of the ideas I really wanted to explore was setting up a layout where you only move your fingers one keys distance away from the home row. And I, over sort of more recently, I've been thinking of applying that logic more to the bottom row where you're normally using your thumbs. So you've got your kind of thumb home orientation and one key to the right and one key to the left. And those extra keys along the bottom row that you end up sort of using either with your little finger or your ring finger or you're, you're stretching with your thumb, they all end up being really awkward. And I, in my personal case, I ended up actually just duplicating the Alt and Control keys uh, on both sides of the keyboard just so that I know I could use at least the correct finger placement on the left keys when I was using those modifiers. But the layout I've created here kind of goes away from all of that and solves all these problems in just 36 keys uh, by getting rid of those outer columns and the bottom row and of course the top number row as well. So we're going to dive into Oryx now and take a look at how I've set this up and I'm going to sort of talk through the design choices I made when I was creating this layout. So hopefully these layout ideas will be interesting to anyone who's, who's customizing a keyboard and exploring different kinds of layouts. And especially if you're interested in doing what I did and you know minimizing those, those awkward keys that you have to stretch over a key to get to. Uh, so let's get stuck into Oryx and we'll take a look. So obviously I've just disabled all these outer keys here. Uh, you can see I'm using the mouse mode actually right now to control the cursor on the screen here. Uh, so what I'm gonna just do is start the little tour that I've set up here and we can use that to sort of go through this layout and see some of the things I've put in place. So I've had a few kind of false starts at making a layout like this work before and the reason is you sort of you set it up and then you get to work and then you sort of come across a barrier like you know you, you can't do command tab or something like that. it's sort of really annoying you've got to go back and sort of fiddle about and do it again. Well I've used this for a couple of days now and I haven't actually hit any barriers. I think I've kind of still accommodated all of the things that I need to do on the Mac day to day. So first of all, this is the space. It's looking at the left thumb key here uh, on the thumb cluster. And you can see it's actually uh, got an interesting label because it's actually a tap dance key. So it's a space for a normal tap. And if you hold it down, it actually just gives you spotlight. And uh, you know, it's holding it down for just over the, the tap delay, which is some just over 200 milliseconds. So it's a, a slightly long press and you get spotlight. So we can go to the next slide here and we're talking now about the main letter keys. So what I've done is set up tap dance on all of the main letter keys here, which just means that if you give them a slightly long press, they will fire the command plus the key version of that key, which is you know unbelievably useful when you're working with a Mac because you know you can just do things like hold down T, hold down W um, to you know create a new tab. Uh, if it wasn't already focused, you can hold down L to get the focus in the address bar. Um, and so on and there's there's loads of these little tricks that I've got throughout this layout So if we jump on to the next one uh, the same with backspace actually normal tap for backspace But if you hold it down it fires alt backspace which gives you a whole word at a time. So that's really useful uh, Let's go on to the next one and now we're talking about the modifier keys. So with the Mac, obviously, you know, you've got pretty extensive use of modifier keys throughout with you know, various uh, keyboard shortcuts, and they're all kind of quite, quite pivotal to, to using a Mac productively. So we've got Alt and Control. Uh, what we've done here, because of tap dance on the main keys, we've got rid of the command key on the bottom row. And that's what makes it possible to have the six keys along the bottom. So we've got Control here, Alt here, and the two layer keys for the keyboard here, space here and shift here. So with all of those, we've got all the modifiers. And the beauty of this, of course, is that because I'm not using my little finger for control, which I used to do with control being over here, I would have to do yeah, this for keys on this side of the keyboard and then switch over to do keys on this side with this hand and the same would apply to shift so when you're using little finger for shift obviously if you want to use the correct finger placement you've got to switch hands when you're using keys on the other side of the board or well, now that we're using our thumb for both shift and control we can just use any key with the correct uh, fingers using just the single thumb key so that's fantastic in its own right so this is the layer switch. Obviously these two kind of home orientation thumb keys uh, are how we switch between layers. Uh, if I just turn off the lighting, we can see the different lighting coming on and off there as I switch layers. And then we've got both down, gives us a third layer as well. So that's the layer two on the right. Now we're into layer one. So that's this one here. 
and this is all mostly self-explanatory looking at the the layout here so obviously the main thing here are the kind of vim style arrow key placements so when you're holding these down you've got the arrow keys here left down up right and what i've done is added tap dance to these as well so left and right will give you alt and the arrow keys uh, left and right when you hold those down and then the middle two i'm just using the n and e keys for notes and email so if i do the hold down those that will open my apps if i open up notes for example now we're into that so we're into layer two now which is this side and this is where we sort of reproduce the functionality of the the left column uh, for your little finger here so we've got escape at the top left and then uh, tab and then the back tick key uh, so with all of those they've got the tap dance function so if you hold down escape it will actually give you the false quit which is really handy because that's an awkward kind of mac keyboard shortcut you've got to do like alt and command and escape all at once so now you can just do that and you're in there so the tab key's got tap dance functionality as well so if you hold that down for just the right length of time to trigger that tap dance hold function uh, it will actually just switch to your previous app and it does that before it even displays the application switcher on screen which is quite nice it's sort of a pretty fast way of just switching between your apps there and if you time that right you'll actually just get it so that it does this without showing the application switcher on screen so it's all very neat and fast and here we've got the back tick key which is interesting because if you're actually doing uh, a command tab you can actually just hit the back tick key to go the other way you don't have to do the shift tab which also works obviously but this makes it super easy to do the back and forth thing in the application switcher so i'm actually triggering this now by holding down my um my sort of second command key which is hidden under this label we'll get to that in a second and we've got this key here which is obviously the equivalent of shift and this one but we want to try and keep this as simple as possible and avoid two modifier kind of keys to get to those things so we can just access that with a single tap on that one there there you can see my command key over here so if you did want to do the application switcher you jump into this layer and then you can do command tab as normal so over here i've got another tap dance kind of shortcut which triggers the selection mode print screen in mac os so if i just give that a little pause on there we can then go ahead and drag a box jump into notes and paste just by doing the long press on the v there and we could do select all backspace and a little back to the previous app shortcut to get back here so that's all quite slick so if we jump back into layer one again now we can see i've got the command key here as well in this layer so there's a couple of extra cases because obviously we don't have a normal place for the command key on these other layers we've made sure the command key exists for a few kind of edge cases and this one here in fact is actually just so that you could do that and that and then click with your mouse and you've got a proper command click available quite easily just with a single left hand um, you know layer command there and the same with shift as well so you could do shift click if you were using the mouse um, you could do a you know end-to-end -end selection if we go back into layer two we can see the enter key is over here so that's actually nice and easy you just do that and then that one uh, which is the home key for your little finger here so layer bam is your enter I, I did experiment putting it there but the chance of actually typing a command that would be a remove file command with a path and, and doing enter instead of a slash for the path and you sort of delete a whole folder instead of something several folders inside that's uh, yeah too risky so um, enter key doesn't replace any of the existing keys uh, so there's no risk there with that one and now we're into layer three which is holding both of these down and we've got the mouse controls of course uh, so that's super fun so you can control it with the the four keys here and you can adjust the acceleration on the right side by doing that and what i find the best way of doing this is actually just to pulse it so some big pulses and some little pulses and you can quickly get to where you want to go and back to layer two we can see we've actually got a shift key there as well so if you did want to do things like shift tab you've still got access to that with this one and the tab key there and again we can actually use command and shift clicking with the mouse mode here so we can do command and click and so on so that's it so it's it's everything you need for the mac in 36 keys 
which is really awesome. Uh, obviously, we've got some serious holes in the keyboard, <laughs> but it's brilliant not having to move your fingers and, and not having to worry about all these modifiers down in the bottom row, which have always really troubled me. You know, you sort of end up doing this control with your little finger, and then the one here is two keys over if you do it with your thumb, and then you end up doing it with your ring finger. And again, all of that stuff means you have to switch sides, which means you end up duplicating them if you want to do that. Uh, but this just avoids the problem in a really elegant way, and I'm really pleased with the way this all, is all set up. So looking at other layouts that use 36 keys, um, you end up with people using chords, which is where you can do multiple keys at a time to, to do things. And I don't think Oryx supports that yet, even though the QMK firmware does, um, but those kind of keyboards do exist. Uh, but with this layout, I don't think it's necessary. This is actually pretty functional as it is and all very quick. And just jumping through these layers, it's all you need. And it's actually pretty fun seeing the LEDs without the keycaps on uh, in this mode here. So I hope that's been an interesting little look at this layout, which has been kind of a long time coming in my mind. I've known that I wanted to pursue this idea of creating a layout that truly is only one key. And even better than that in that case, you know, not you're not even moving your little fingers out from their home column at all. So it's just literally one key up and down for most keys here, and then one each side of your home thumb keys, and then the only ones that have the alternate columns are the in, inner fingers here. And they are the most awkward, you know, you really still feel that. these, This one in particular, this movement, is still a real pain. So when I did that video looking at this angle and uh, how you end up with this is actually, at least for me, it was preferable to trying to line it up. And I figured out what the reason for that is, and it's all about this pinky. So if I line it up like that, with my fingers on the home row now, if I extend my, my little finger, it's not reaching the top row. I have to move my hand as well. That's the reason I ended up doing that. Whereas now a full extended little finger hits that top key perfectly and I can do this and get to all these keys. So maybe for the people that thought that was a little bit weird that I had the keys angled out like this, you know, maybe you guys are happier moving to reach with your little fingers on those top keys or maybe you've got longer little fingers. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously we're all different and that's, that's what these keyboards are so good for. You can just do what you want with it and what is the most comfortable for you. Uh, for me, it was the ability to, to reach all of the keys without moving my arm at all. That was what I really wanted to do is just minimize that, that total movement and this outward angle helps me do that. Uh, but it's all great fun messing about with these keyboards and, and this software Oryx just makes it so easy to get the software onto the keyboard and, and start experimenting. So do let me know if you've got any tips or ideas about other things that I've missed on this layout. I'd love to hear that and incorporate it into a future version of this layout. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.